Hey guys, this is John Sterrett here, and today we're going to go over the very basics of how do I benchmark a query. So when we think of benchmarking a query, we want to think of attributes that will allow us to classify a query as maybe sluggish, all right, fast. And ways to do this could be based off of different metrics. So typically what we'll end up focusing on is three different metrics for how a query is running. The first one that most people will focus on is time. So how long did this query actually really run? So you might use a stopwatch, um, but we're going to actually show you how you could do this internally here as part of your benchmarking process. The next thing that you may think about is CPU, right? Is my CPU taxed? How many CPU cycles are we actually going through and using here? And the next one here would be IO. So how much IO is being consumed, IO being pages read logically. So are we thinking of pages being read and being consumed as part of a scan or a seek operator to actually go fetch and get your data? So with that, we're going to go ahead and start the process of benchmarking a query here. So I'm going to use this copy of AdventureWorks that we have here, and I'm going to run our set statistics IO in time and set this on because this will allow us then to get metrics for how much IO is consumed by table in our query, but then also how much time, whether it was CPU or actually duration of the query running. The next thing I'll do for benchmarking here is make sure I turn on my actual execution plan. We won't go into a lot of details in this video about this, but this will allow us to see the plan that is used to go ahead and fetch and get that data for us here. So now that we have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and go down to a query down here that we are going to use for benchmarking purposes here. So for this query here, we see we have a table here cross applying to another table. We're going to go ahead and run this. And we'll see this will run in about a second or two here. And as we actually go to our messages tab here, so this is where we're going to see how long it took for us to parse and compile. So we saw zero milliseconds because this was already in cache here. But this is where we're going to see how many rows were impacted here or selected. And then here's the I.O. for us. So this is showing us how much I.O. So, for example, the sales order detail and large share had 49,000 logical reads here. So this tells you that if we were going to tune this to reduce I.O., we probably want to focus on this table because that's where we'd see our biggest gains. The next part over here, we mentioned our set statistics time. You're going to see here exactly how much CPU was consumed and then how, dur how much duration here was consumed for that query as well. So this is how long the total query took. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that the CPU time is higher than the duration time. And you might be wondering, well, how is that possible? Well, let's go look at the execution plan. Here in the execution plan, you're going to see operators with these two arrows here, and that's because we're going parallel. So this is a reason why we can see that we have more CPU than actual duration here. So basically what we covered in this quick video, we went over a couple of things. One, how can you actually benchmark with their, whether it's I.O., CPU, duration, and how we can also look at the execution of that plan. So I hope you like this tip. Uh, my name is John Sterrett, and I hope you check out other future tips that we have for you as well. Thanks.